Welcome back everyone. This is episode 2 of taking Hastein to India. Now, uh, uh, at the end of the last episode, I told you guys that I will just time skip until I'll reach the kingdom title to create the kingdom of the Tamil, so Tamilakan. Right now it's just called Riki of Tamilakan. So here, as you can see, I kind of manually just changed the dresses, the costumes of Hastein himself, his son, and his wife, of course. And in the background, there's still the long ship. Now, to me, this symbolizes the fact that at this point in time, they still believe that they're Norse, but they, are, they, have, they have already started to adopt local cultures. So basically, the, the dresses, even though Hastein is a little bit less immersed into this new indian thing like i i gave i did give him a, an indian crown and indian clothes however he still has a fur fur cap which is traditional to the north however his son and his wives are fully into it his son only, only the only thing his son has that is typically north is basically just his beard and his axe but I think that the, the cultural acceptance will be high enough when his son will become uh, uh, king. So basically, at that point, I will create the Indo-Norse culture. Uh, well, let's begin. No. I don't know why I was there. <laughs> so, I did create the kingdom. Uh... This way, my succession will not be fucked up. <laughs> my second son here is already the duke of more than half of our realm. He already owns it. And I think this guy, I just want for the roleplay, I just want to think that he might be less enthusiast enthusiastic. He, he might have less enthusiasm than his older brother to adopt all of the culture and practices of the locals or on the other side maybe i don't know because uh, i decided to not uh, educate him myself <laughs> i don't think uh, a guy like hastein at this point will have cared about his low son look at his straight his son needing some sort of education Plus, he's the child of a concubine. I think he will have just left him and someone in his court, yeah. He's one of uh, someone in his court is his guardian. Just hope that he doesn't become Tamil just directly because what I thought at the beginning of the of this episode is probably that he will he might be a staunch traditionalist, so he might want to oppose the shift in the Hastein dynasty that is going on right now. So, the first thing I wanted to do here is probably just invade the Maldives and start raiding a little bit. To, you know, get to know more our new homeland. <laughs> this is what Vikings do. But first of all, I prefer to go to our royal court. It, look at this, it's gorgeous. Now, of course, we aren't investing anything inside of it. So, we probably need to change that right now. We don't have a lot of money, but that will change pretty quickly because we have the richest region in the whole game. So for now, just decent fashion and decent food, m middling lodging, basically uh, decent housing and some servant, uh, an adequate number of servant will be good enough. Although maybe... Mm, for the roleplay purposes, I do think that the Vikings might like perhaps the food more yeah the food let's just put it lavish food i do think that he's tied the greedy and lustful guy will, will want to you know get done with his concubine just after a, <laughs> a great meal a great feast with in, a nice indian food with of course a norse flavor to it so let's just change it and that will cause the baseline to go from three to um a lot basically be 48 so 39 
that's huge now we can actually use our cord after some some point we'll be able to hold court and that will be very very good for the role play now look at this little carpet i like it but i do have a mod however that makes things pretty good right now so you see this this helps me change the royal core that i have so it is a mod so all of the royal cards are here to you players that don't have the community flavor pack mod you'll not be able to have the andalusian and the eastern african the western african or the norman courts you will just have these these four courts i i really don't know why paradox just gave us these three um options but basically it's quite good for now i do think that Haystein wouldn't be he he did adopt some things of the indian culture but do you really think that he will go in the same palaces as the people he invaded like let's imagine like this is real life he just invaded he just did the varangian adventure and now he just reaches the capital which is the most developed city in the entire world at the time in the game and he has two options he might build something similar to his homeland and or he might just enter in the same exact palaces as the people conquered his time i personally think that on a role play level he will then completely do that like even though we gave him indian clothes and an indian crown i think it is just something that the vikings might be uh, used to this this isn't something that might be too against their customs yeah they, they, they usually like to assimilate within the conquered people within, within the culture of the people that they ended up ruling over so i do think that he might prefer more of a european style yeah a european style court like this one there, there's probably multiple styles that i could choose however the, the new ones are quite beautiful no this is really just it's not really norse minded although it's a norman and the normans are a mix between vikings and french people yeah a norse of the time wouldn't really want a court like that neither this it really just doesn't fit we are far away from the andalusian but although it is it is gorgeous we can't really do it in the go can we now <laughs> i wish i could always use the eastern african core because that's amazing this is gorgeous as soon as i become an emperor i will ch switch to this court i just can't use any other court this is just <laughs> this is amazing now in my future playthroughs in uh, and there will be a lot centered around africa yeah i will use this but for now let's, let's check the mediterranean the western i think this is what haystan might prefer this court is definitely what haystan might be more in at ease with instead of <laughs> for him this this type of court the indian one might be too exaggerated it might be too flashy maybe it might be oh this this ceramic style is just too much for me it's too weird this might be for him a more natural style it's still indian though and this maybe it could be something he might prefer but you know what we'll just stick with the western one yeah this one this one is probably what Haystan will want even though we're in the middle of india <laughs> it's, it's still weird to have a court like that in the middle of india but yeah i will stick with this one now yeah we're already court level three so as a starter i will just directly hold court i will hear the petition so in order to be a successful ruler i must actually rule on the various dilemmas and situations which arise within my sphere of influence by officially inviting all of my subjects to travel my castle and petition me for aid, I will be able to stay informed, sway the balance of power, and visibly show the world that I'm in charge. Let's hear them now. Let's hear them now. So, sitting on my throne, I gesture for my guards to open the doors of the hall. A stream of people file in, 
some lining up in front of my throne while others move out of the way so they can simply observe the proceedings. After several moments, all movement in the chamber has ceased. All faces turns, turned towards mine expectantly. In front of me, I count three petitioners lined up in an orderly row, waiting for me to call on them. Let's go. Let's start it. Oh, I do like the, the, the music that starts with the royal court when you're in the royal court. Maybe I, I might just need to reduce a little bit the music. Yeah, because it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. Now, the first petitioner is... Patanasamini Manikam. <laughs> it's gonna be a nightmare to pronounce all these names. <laughs> That's just so weird. Now, my vassal... Oh, she's... A Baroness. She's... Yeah, a Baroness. Uh, in a county. Of the, the, the Barony of... Kelyaran, Kelyrayan. Okay, so my vassal, Pantanasami, whatever, approaches me tapping her foot like she often does. Okay, my lord, I have brilliant idea. I have a brilliant idea. How about we host a fair or perhaps even a festival for the common folk to expose them to one of the different cultures in our beautiful kingdom? Manikam explains her idea further until she realizes that she's dangerously close. To over explain it it will cost the money okay now remember your liege your king is a very greedy he's so greedy that his nickname is literally the greedy so do not expect him to invest a lot of money in whatever whatever fantastic idea you have right now so it will cost money but i'm sure it will help foster a more positive relationship between our people now remember, we definitely want to create an Indo-Norse culture here, mixing the Tamil people and the Norse people. So the best thing right now will be let, let's let's check out the option. So we'll hold a big festival celebrating both of our cultures. Now that will increase the cultural acceptance between us, the Northmen, and the Tamil Tam, Tamil Arkal by 20% which means that if we take this decision right now starting with haste time we will already be able to create um uh, to merge our two cultures because look at how how much prestige he has it's already perfect does it fit character though you know what i thought that haste time might be a little bit less let's just say that he did actually create the indo-norse culture but he wasn't fully he wasn't f fully committed to it you know so yeah he did start it but he basically expected his descendants to be fully immersed into the indian traditions and he wanted to stick a little bit more with his norse ways but still he wanted to merge a little bit of uh, he wanted to uh, adopt some of the local traditions within his own life and so yeah that will will eventually cost a lot of <laughs> a lot of gold because our good old Haystein is very greedy who cost him 75 stress because he's greedy now let's check out other options here we could host a small tamil fair in madurai now that will increase by 10% and will cost less. Hmm. We could hold an exhibit in Tamir Alkar lands to show them Nordron greatness. Now this is something that the Norse at the time wouldn't have done. Definitely. I, I don't think so. They always they were malleable invaders, just like in their culture. They they were able to really merge the cultures with, with their conquer people very easily. And I also want to be the ruler of my own culture. And remember, this new culture will have one of the most OP, or one of the most OP provinces, which means that the cultural advancement will be through the roof. I will directly have new eight, eight up to eight new inventions discovered directly on the spot just because we were merged with the Tamil. Heystein doesn't look like a very smart man. <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, to be honest, but 
Yeah, I think he will do that. Also, the Nor he's greedy, but as a Norseman, maybe he likes to feast. So, yeah, yeah, the first option. We will hold a big festival celebrating both of our cultures. And directly after that, directly after our whole court right now, I will just go directly and create the Indo Norse culture. Good. Open carry. So, my Hertogi. I have no idea what Hertogi means. <laughs> But I know he's my vassal. And oh look at this. He has he has the brave trait. He's a hunter, a rough terrain expert. He is berserker. Th this guy is a good soldier. It's good to have him on my side. I we have mixed feelings about him. It's quite neutral. We don't hate each other, however. So he has nine opinion of me. I have seven opinion of him. Yeah, yeah. And the other one. Mm, the other one hates us. We do like him a little bit more than the other, but he completely hates us, and we, we know it. And they have pretty similar traits. Look. And I knew it, they're rivals. Isn't it ironic that, that people who resemble each other so much end up being rivals? Yeah. Now, two of my vassals are pushing one on one another, and jostling to reach my throne first. Gjaldikiri, Arning, so him, bows before me. He says, my lord, murder is wanton in the city streets through Riki, to the, throughout Riki of Tamilakam, so the Tamil kingdom. It will be civilizing if we instituted a ban on townspeople bearing arms, at least within the city limits. Gjaldikiri Toki kicks him out of the way, safety is each man learning. To protect himself, banning carry, banning carry of weaponry will castrate the townspeople. Mm. Now, this is pretty funny because it's also uh, a pretty recent problem that many people have. And here, yeah, yes, of course, I'm talking about America. <laughs> America cannot be compared. America cannot be compared to uh, the India of the time. However, uh, they would. However, apparently, <laughs> CK, uh, the makers of CK3 just thought that they might have similar problems. Hmm. Now. Personally, <laughs> and I'm not playing personally, I'm playing as this guy right here, Haystein. He's ambitious, but he, let's remember he's a raider, viking, he's adventurer, he's a cautious leader, he's military minded, and he's Norse. He lived in the 9th century. The three options that we have here is we shall ban weapons within settlement walls. Okay? And it will have uh, the a, a quite a positive. It will have a, a positive influence on the people. So basically, uh, there will be more safety, of course, and the government will be more respected. So we we'll, uh, our control growth will increase exponentially, much more. Yeah, the zero point one for you guys. It's not really a lot, but on the long run, it's quite good because it's over 50 years plus this vassal of ours uh, he his opinion of us will increase but we don't really need it do we instead maybe we need his relationship to be better with us now there's other two options that we have keep our swords lest our realm weaken follow the opinion of this guy as a Norse greedy man who also is a, happens to be a, a, an adventurer and a viking, I do agree with you. However, I think that he's quite he's quite a sadistic man. So I chose the third one. <laughs> I chose the third one because we just want to have some fun, you know. <laughs> uh, he she's my guest. You know what, Skjaldvor? 
if you ever thought that you could go back to Norway, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, the journey you took with me, there is no way back. <laughs> You're too far from home to even hope doing that. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Skjaldborg. But you might be a guest to me, but as soon as you will leave this court, hey, you will go to some random Indian's court. <laughs> Now, my guest Kalba approaches my throne with a smirk on her face and bows deeply. Okay. Greetings, your majesty. During my recent trip to the Raskutraka Staramjiam. Oh, it's a, king it's a kingdom just next to me. I learned some fascinating tidbits about several of Vallabharaya Krishna's subject, subjects. And he is a king who just randomly stays naked. Nice. <laughs> I will be ha happy to share these with you for a price. Uh, not only am I greedy, but I'm also in debt right now. So anything involving money is a big no-no for me right now. Okay, and a hefty sum, but I cannot afford to remain ignorant. And she'll reveal some secrets. So she'll basically be a, sp a paid spy for us. She she's basically a spy that came to offer her uh, to, to offer us some secrets so she's not she's like a mercenary but she doesn't fight she's just a spy yeah i don't know how to explain it properly but yeah you guys understand what i mean the other one is nobody extorts me in front of my court guard guards si size her yeah they did not they misspelled it seize her and the other is begun rumor monger my court has no place for the likes of you Haystein, Haystein, Haystein. I I guess you would you would or order your guards to catch her right now. And all of you guys know what I will do afterwards. <laughs> you know let's check how old Haystein's Look, Haystein's wife is 49. She's 20 years old younger than him but still she's 49 this whole time i think Haystein misses the time when he was 18 year old and he had an actual norse girlfriend because right now though he yeah he does have a 44 year old french woman but she's french and he has a a norse wife but she's 49 our guy probably wants a nice young norwegian woman to spend his time with so it's <laughs> I do think he might really just consider taking out a concubine. Yeah, that's something Haystein will do. He's lustful after all. After all. I I think I think something Paradox should add is that every time a lustful character takes a concubine, he decreases stress. <laughs> that's just a funny concept but it makes sense. Okay. You joined the Indonor's harem. <laughs> Skjaldvor. They, they, they got weird names, man. Let's unpause. I got a court event. And it's this guy. Jasper. A foul smell. Look at him. Look at Haystein in all of his glory. <laughs> and that's, that's a Catholic French... You, you really did come all the way from France to India with me, right? You, you, you seem like you're... You look like you're a very loyal subject. Mm. But you know what? I don't, I don't really like Catholicism as Haystein. So I will just <laughs> demand your conversion. And of course you will accept because if you don't, then... I will kick you out. <laughs> my liege, a word, please. He says. My first theory, and I think first theory means night. Or I might be mistaken. Yeah, it means night. Approaches me during a brief lull while attending court matters. He gestures to a less populated spot in the room. And I follow him there. I am concerned about the state of Madurai Castle. While holding a meeting in one of the rooms, we all notice a horrific smell. 
It must have come from the latrines a floor below. I implore you to consider paying to fix the neglected parts of the building. Okay. Now. I don't have enough money to do all of this. I will ensure that the problem gets fixed as soon as possible. Haystein is a stinky, a stinky viking. Who is greedy? I don't think he cares about foul smells. Nah, he doesn't really care about it, does he? My armad um, armadra can handle this matter. Even here, I don't think Haystein might even want to appoint anyone. He might say that you guys should be men right now. You, you, you need to go through this smell. Even though it, it probably smells like shit right now. You just need to be men and not whine about it. And so he will just say, just plug the hole in the, just plug the hole in the floor. <laughs> Jasper will lose a, a 10 opinion of us. He already doesn't really like us a lot. But this is the most, uh, this is the most accurate reaction that Heistan might have. So just plug that hole. <laughs> okay, nice. This actually looks like a long ship. Yeah, th this is really accurate. I do think Haystein will prefer something like that. Now, another mod that I have is um, the toggle free camera. It lets me go in anywhere, any place in the court. I like it's quite a nice mod. It's incorporated within the mod that lets me change the court. So make sure you guys check it out. I think it just means change. The name of the mod is just change court. And that's it. If you want it to be, there is a compatibility patch if you want to play it with uh, the community flavor pack. And this is the best thing to do because the Andalusian court, the Goideli court, the Eastern African, the Western African, the Norman court, all of those, those five court types that are unique to that mod. So you really need to check it out. In fact, you, you, you can't really play CK3 without having the community flavor pack mod. That's impossible. I'm waiting just, I'm just, right now, I'm waiting for Paradox to make it uh, achievement compatible. Because it's the mod that everyone plays with. And recently, they even added new artifacts and everything. It's just quite good. Um, yeah, it was the Western one. I will just toggle the free camera again and... Nice. Let's go back. We can't really do anything. We can't really uh, declare any wars. Like that. Oh yeah, I, I remember right now. <sighs> it was quite a long time ago. Like the, this holding court took quite a lot of time. But we are ready to merge cultures. Or aren't we? Yeah, 22%. We can already form the hybrid culture. Now... We can choose between the communal and the bellicose culture. Our Vikings, every time they did assimilate within the cultures, they did they they kept the bellicose culture. Honestly, like look at the Russian culture and the Norman culture. Yeah, they just kept it. Yeah, they will remain bellicose because they're Norse. The heritage, it has to be Norse because again. Look at the the Russians and the Normans. Within all of between their archives of history, they're actually quite proud to co to come from that really strong and manly background. They really they're really proud of having their Norse ancestors. But something that you see in every um, hybrid culture created by Norse is that they did abandon the Norse language. And instead adopted the language of the people they had conquered. So. Yeah. I guess. We will start speaking Tamil. Because uh, it makes sense. Now the traditions. We can pick five. Five traditions. We already. Uh, covered this part. Uh, in the last video. But. Maybe. I will go again through this. I do not really want the metal workers. Instead, I prefer have being them. I prefer them 
being coastal warriors because it makes more sense. Now the parochialism uh, cultural tradition is actually quite good. The performative honor is just related to shield maidens, so basically uh, women. I don't really care about that. <laughs> now for not for being sexist, but uh, this this cultural tradition is quite useless, honestly. Uh, as soon as you create, for example, a faith that is uh, has the equal doctrine, you don't really need that this tradition anymore. This tradition just seems like it has a huge, a very huge disadvantage. And remember, our current character is greedy, and he is the one that's creating the culture. So I don't think he will necessarily uh, want. To pick a cultural tradition that makes him spend more money. Yeah, he doesn't want that. <laughs> Our Haystein is very greedy. In fact, his name is the Greedy. <laughs> uh, I wish I could keep the Northern stories. I really wish I could. Thingmit. Thingmit. Can you nice the Scandinavian like? What can I... You know what? I would just I would just leave the parochialism. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good enough. Now, I want to look Indian. The military equipment has to be Indian because it really symbolizes the fact that we went away from Scandinavia, and I don't really imagine <laughs> that it will be accurate to have completely. I I don't even think. Yeah, of course we we do. They used to do weapons and armor with similar materials, but I really think that even the you know the temperature, the climate, and everything, all of these factor factors mean that it would be really weird to have just a, a full armored Norse styled warrior just walking around here in South India. It would be better, and I really think that while adopting this culture, they will not completely abandon. They will still be uh, bellicose. Related to the nor northern heritage, but they will they will be Indian. They will be Indian in many ways, and one of these is the military equipment. Now the names. <laughs> on one side you have unpronounceable weird way names, and on the other side you got even more unpronounceable and weird names. <laughs> but. Uh, when they went to France and they created the Norman culture, they adopted the full names. The, they adopted the names of these people, of, of the people they conquered. They adopted French names. The Normans were Norse in many ways, but not in names. I would just... Yeah. I would just adopt the Tamil culture. The Tamil names. <laughs> now that's gonna be really weird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I will do that. Now look at this. <laughs> look at his time without the beard, <laughs> with the with the Indian mustache. <laughs> now this is something I didn't think I will see one day. <laughs> the fashion, yeah, we will leave both. It will create some amazing. Funny shit right now in this playthrough. I I just can't wait to to play even in five characters to see how India will look and how the characters will look. And the coat of arms we can use between Dravidians. So Dravidian just kind of means Southern Indian, Indian Central Indian, yeah. And the Norse. Let's just put both as well. Now I really like this eight. We'll discover eight Tamil innovations. From the start, oh, they would. This will be amazing. Oh, we we forgot. We will not name it Tamila, Nordron. We will name it Indo Nordron. Yeah. Indo Nord. And here we go. Form the hybrid culture. 
the Indo-Northern hybridization, spurred on by positive relations and increased cultural exchange. The Nordron, so the Norse, and the Tamil people, peoples have grown increasingly close over the years. Now individuals from these societies have begun to view themselves not as one or not as one or the other, but as both simultaneously. A new Indo-Nordron culture. Northern tradition and values form the backbone of this new culture, while various Tamil attributes have been ad adapted and integrated to meet the needs of the new society. With the Indo-Nordron people now looking to me for guidance, it is time to set the stage for a shared future. Yeah, I really think this will work out quite well. Oh, look at this. It already spread towards most of... It already ate up most of the Tamil culture. Look, <laughs> I did not expect this, honestly. Wait. Development? Yeah, the... Although I would have preferred if this these two provinces stayed Tamil and this now became Indo Norse. But still we are in a pretty good position right now. Yeah. I really want to see what this holds in the future. Now we will check at the innovations. And now we almost discovered everything from the tribal era. <laughs> we are already ready to enter the uh, early medieval era. But we are, s we are 16 years ahead of everyone else. <laughs> this is just how impactful uh, merging our two cultures was. Wait, Cassus Bell? Mm. Let's see right now uh, what tradition... We, we get we will automatically focus on banus now i would have preferred if it was moats which is take which will take 38 years let's just stick with banus oh it would take 12 years yeah just before the uh, just before accessing the early medieval era so it's quite kind of nice it's okay now we got answer to elephantry and varinja adventures this <laughs> this culture is just amazing we can have as men at arms Bondi, Vigmen, Varangian Veterans, War Elephants, Pikes, and even Hoskers. Now, I created the ultimate raiding and reach. And the, look, again, I'm not being racist, but I think this these people will be really liked by the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really really similar similar in mind except uh, the bellicose part but still there will be amazing trading partners like uh, in real life they will control a really big part of the uh, indian trade ocean so they, they, they already control a big part of the of the indian ocean but here they will f uh, control the flow of trade from uh, basically the middle east to Ch no, not exactly China because it will go to the Silk Road up here. But basically from the Middle East to other areas here in in Eastern India and also Burma. Yeah, the, I think this is one of the reasons why it's pretty rich. Probably. Now, the new name is Matirai. Karavur. That's how it's called in the Tamil, I think. Now we don't have enough piety to reform. We, we can't even reform. <laughs> ah, now I just realized something. So eventually we will, if we really want to do something uh, really unique playthrough related to the religion, we will have to completely abandon the Norse religion and maybe convert absolutely non yapania because we don't want everyone to be naked. <laughs> also because i don't want this video to be put down <laughs> by youtube so maybe this uh, sri kula although this this same sex acceptance is pretty no 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 i don't like it <laughs> uh maybe the vaishnite religion what why do they all accept gay people <laughs> I did not expect that from 9th century India. 
<laughs> this pretty, this is really weird, honestly. <laughs> All of them, and it's look, female adultery shunned, male adultery shunned, deviancy shunned, but here same sex relations just accepted. Paradox is this historically accurate? I I really doubt it, really doubt it because I don't think in those religions uh, it is allowed for um, same sex people to get married. So how is it accepted while the adultery is shunned? When according to their own laws, this uh, will be not permissible. I guess they. Nah, I don't really know. Anyway, I will eventually convert to one of these ones, except the Japania. <laughs> it's a big no, no, no. I don't want uh, naked people everywhere in the game. Maybe the Vaish Knight. Or, or I will become Buddhist. Nah, the, the holy sites are too far. Anyway, I will see. Because remember, my objective is creating the Deccan Empire here. And go on. At that point, I hope I will already have at least the high partition uh, succession law, the, which will not completely break up uh, my whole realm uh, as soon as uh, I will die. One of my characters will die. So I hope that by the end of the campaign, I will have conquered the entirety of the Deccan Empire, the Bengal Empire and the Empire of Rajasthan. And I will rename the Deccan Empire as um holy indo norse empire and at that point i will end this campaign now just a uh is it can we really call it a disclaimer no it's just an announcement for me even though i, I, I don't have many subscribers for now uh i will be doing multiple clan campaigns at the same time so do not expect me to go to only play with Hastain, with uh, the Hastaining dynasty here, and go on up until the year 14, uh, was it 1444, without doing anything else. No, that's ni a nightmare. <laughs> I will get bored. <laughs> you as well. So maybe after three or four, or even five episodes, I will start another campaign. I will not completely abandon this one, of course. But I will start adventuring in uh, starting new campaigns. Now, I cannot ask you guys what do you want me to do in the next campaign. Because the, <laughs> I'm not really sure that any people outside of my friends right now will watch these videos. So, if, if, you, if you stumble upon this and I still did not choose the next campaign... And mir I miraculously become very, very popular just out of the blue like that <laughs> pretty quickly. Propose me. Propose me where I shall start. However, I do want it to be a really nice and original place. Not Al-Andalus of France or, or Poland. Or, of course, the fan very favorite, Great Britain. Or then again, go with a, a Norse character. No, I want a really unique playthrough. Like... I don't know. Creating the Mongol Empire uh, 300 years before <laughs> before it actually happened. Uniting Tibet. Now I want to be away from India again. Or bringing back the old glory of the Abbasid Caliphate. And finally uh, destroy the papacy. Yeah, that might be a really good idea, a really cool idea. That's basically just the idea I prefer. <laughs> basically, f starting with the Abbasids, uh, abolish the papacy. So it's a. Uh, it's a decision that you get when you play as any character that is not uh, Christian. When you play as any character that is not Christian, who has a capital. Uh, I think here in Europe, or even uh, in the Middle East, in Asia, the, this region here, or Northern Africa. But uh, I just realized that the rice mod that I have on gives me a lot of new 
events like here yeah of course there we could forge the yom's viking but there's a i can go and take very historically inaccurate things but no i will not do as far as that i or maybe was it a a, a lag a, a bug last time i i was able to do it i don't know but basically i will take this decision and which is to collaborate with indian ocean pirates why fight against the Indian Ocean Pirates when you can work together to profit off your mut mutual foes? This is something the Norse will do. I'm pretty sure that will happen. And I, I will have a pirate den. Yeah, that will be amazing. A special building called Pirate Den. And let's read the historical context. The line between an armed merchant and a pirate was often blurry. Simple looting was often not a viable long-term goal. Thus, historically, in many maritime re regions like the Indian Ocean, many elites often worked together with pirates for profit and gain, and to weaken mutual foes who were economic competitors. Now, I do expect that if we had more control over the actions and what happens here, you might even had a kind of a... What, what was the name of that? Uh... uh Varangian Guard. There was something that was available. In uh, this, there was something that happened. Basically, Norse Vikings will go to the Byzantine Empire and join uh, a horde or an order of knights and warriors. I think it's called the Varangian, the Varangian Guard. And they will come back with new skills and having seen a big part of the world. But many of them and will end up staying and adopting some of the descendants will even end up becoming Greek. Now, here instead, this could happen in a similar way. But not exactly like the Byzantine Empire. Like you could have some of the Vikings that came over with us. And that is a, quite a big number, like around more than 600 of them are still alive. It's new to remember that these special soldiers, the actual human beings in the game, of course. Even though to us playing right now, they're just disposable characters, disposable units, numbers, nothing more than that. If you really think about it, there are, there are actual Vikings that left their homeland in scandinavia and went to us to a crazy journey uh, to southern india to see people they didn't even think would exist now i really i really want to make him marry a local <laughs> local just to have a funny looking child <laughs> i will see i will see uh i prefer not having a lot of children that that is better that is something I really aim for. Because I don't want my succession to be screwed. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, it's as if I'm, I'm starting to be too much in character right now. <laughs> I just said I don't want my, my succession to be screwed. But still I went to see if I can take another concubine. Poor me. <laughs> um, what could I do? Now... The length of the video is already quite, quite satisfying, isn't it? Yes, I think we can already end it here. Yeah, we can already end it here. You know what, people? Bye bye. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the the that the lightning went a little bit darker. If you can't see, it, then good. If you can't see it, then just know that my computer is almost dead right now. <laughs> I need to plug it in and charge it. Anyway, it was a nice episode. Uh, the first thing I will do next episode in front of you guys is cre uh, create a very nice coat of arms just for this nice uh, Tamil slash Norse kingdom. A really nice coat of arms that will uh, uh, really symbolize the merging between these Norse invaders, these Norse Vikings, that did not really want to oppress the minority they, they ended up conquering, but integrated them 
in this new society and ad willingly adopted their language and some of their customs. I want to show that with the coat of arms that we'll we will give to this kingdom. Anyway, bye bye. If you sticked to the end, I guess I will just start doing the same thing as other YouTubers do. Uh, like and subscribe and uh, do whatever the fuck you want. If, if, if you want to stick around and watch the next episode, then it's cool. It might be better if you like it as well. If you like the video, it will really help me. Just like I said, it will be a good motivation. Bye-bye.